Thanks very much for popping into the studio. So, um, so yeah, so instead of having the traditional artist talk in the gallery, we've decided to bring you into the studio and the works that you see behind me are some of the works that you'll be able to see in the gallery space today. Probably hear from my accent, I'm not originally from here. I uh, moved to Vancouver, I think it is 11 years ago now, after having had 10 years in, in Europe. Um, but originally I'm from South Africa. I studied at Rhodes University. Uh, I have my fine art degree, uh, majoring in painting. But realistically, the thing about painting is that you can only become a painter and you can only become proficient in your medium when you're actually working in it. And in order to become proficient in your medium through working, you really need to put in the time. I feel like now I have become an artist. If you, you were part of my earlier journey, thank you. Uh, if you're only joining me now in the journey, thank you. See the maturity that has crept into my work um, over the course of the past 11 years. And that is really the result of engaging in the dialogue that the medium requires. I am specifically an oil painter. There is a very small number of artists who are called to work in all mediums for the majority of us. Uh, we definitely have that one medium which calls to us uniquely and demands our 100% focus. And for me, that is oil. It's the studio. You're actually in the basement of 268 Kiefer Street at the moment, which is an unusual space to have a studio. And it's even more unusual when you know that this used to be a supermarket down here. And that's the reason why we've got these incredible 20 foot ceilings. It really is an amazing space. Um, I've been here for about three years now. And uh, yeah, uh, next time you come in, please pop pop in into the basement. And when you do come in, a quick spin around, please remind me to get you to sign my door. The urban environment changes as we move from the colder, darker, rainier months uh, into the spring and into the summer. And of course, the cherry blossoms, how the cherry blossoms herald the opening up of the city, and how the beautiful pinks and the fragrances uh, invigorate us and make us go out onto the streets to explore and take our cameras and to socialize and the interesting thing is that that was the context of the exhibition at that particular point in time and as we were looking at the works that were currently in the studio and the new works that would be created as the blossoms burst into life uh, we all ended up staying at home so the work became a lot more local then. and there was this very interesting tension of course we were all experiencing uh, and still are to a certain degree this tension but then having this feedback of these blossoms that they're doing exactly as they always had it was just us as a society which was undergoing these pressures so it it created a very interesting dynamic for me as a painter that relationship with the streets you will also notice in the pieces particularly the ones that deal with the cherry blossoms it, it's the brushwork and the colors which have had the most impact um, as a result of the uncertainty caused by COVID-19. This studio building uh, at one point was closed to members of the public. There's been a lot of... I felt a little unsure as to whether... So although I was able to come into the studio every day, I was always accompanied by a great deal of uncertainty. And as a result, uh, the paintings are very much created in the moment. An interesting thing about creating in the moment is that as a full-time painter for the past 11 years, you can imagine I have a toolbox of brush strokes and uh, colors and relationships that I understand within the paint. Uh, and that toolbox is developing, developing, developing. And I never really feel that I have the opportunity to really open it up and dig deep into it. During this period, I actually found myself very unintentionally uh, digging really, really deep, bringing out brush strokes and colors and relationships between different elements in the paintings that I hadn't experienced since South Africa. So that was a very weird compression of time that started happening in the studio as the pieces themselves that seemed to take me from here in Vancouver to me as a painter at the beginning of my career and compress them so that there was uh, interchanging and, and that brings me to a very important aspect of the work that I would like you to pay attention to as you're experiencing the pieces complexity so what do I mean by complexity 
Complexity is the infusion of time in the paintings, uh, and I treat time as another pigment on my palette. I'll bring the painting up to a certain level of completion, I strip it back, not completely, just in the areas of the canvas where the painting uh, is, is letting me know that it's a possible area for a new conversation. And, and that's the reason why I do it, is to push the painting forward into a new conversation. And I'll do this sometimes once or twice. I'll sometimes do this six or seven times. But as a result of this, the very superficial, the very top layers of paint are really what was painted now. And as I start digging back into the paint and sometimes finding myself back at the canvas, I'm also stepping back in time. So there is that compression of time as we see marks which happened in a world where we weren't staying at home, we didn't think we would stay at home, and then we're experiencing these marks which were created in a world where we were now staying at home and experiencing all that anxiety and uncertainty. Gives the paintings a very specific flavor. And you will notice that as you're, as you're experiencing the piece, some of them have a flavor that hits you just on the top of your tongue and others really hit you at the back. So go ahead and walk around and enjoy the pieces. I would encourage you to experience them. Um, if you experience them, you will taste them.